Welcome to LARP Academia. Today we're going to talk about what class should you pick in Amp Guard? I know we're starting to revisit a few other LARPs. Again, we said that it wouldn't be the end of that content for the previous LARPs. So we'll be coming back and forth to different LARPs and still continuing ahead with new LARPs as well to try to get you informed as much as possible on your personal LARP. Now, I would love to hear what LARP you do in the comments below and and what you would like to have covered in that LARP. Because just because we've technically finished that LARP doesn't mean we won't come back to it. Just like Amp Guard. Now, for what class should you choose? Now, when going over what class to pick, there are going to be three different charts that kind of come down. The charts may take up the entire screen at times, but eh, it is what it is. The first part we're going to cover is melee martial classes. It's going to be the section that we're going to do right now. But later on, we will next cover uh, melee spell casting classes is in spell casters, which if you want to skip ahead, check in the timestamps down below. And the last one would be range. Range is a bit more interesting, uh, since it's not just brought into martial and spell casting. It's a hodgepodge of table that can be combined into one. And if you're interested in ranged options, check the timestamps down below. But now we are starting with melee martial classes. Now the first question you need to ask yourself if you want to be melee is if you want to be primarily a spellcaster who has all these abilities or a martial class. If you want a martial class which has yeah a few abilities but I'm here mainly to just you know hit things in melee then you need to start with this question. Do I want to be more defensive or more aggressive? Now if I want to be more defensive I have to ask the question who am I being defensive against? Am I being defensive against other martial classes, other classes that wield weapons and try to harm and kill people in the same way I do? Or do I want to be defensive against magic, against things that I'm not using entirely and I hate? If you want to be more defensive against those martial classes, weapons, then you should probably be warrior since this class is more set to being defensive and being able to protect yourself against those martial classes. It can help a little bit against magic, but not that much. The opposite is that if you want to go and be defensive against magic, the best by far martial class defensively against magic is a monk. Now, yes, there are some casting classes that have workarounds, like if you have a specifically built battle mage wizard who has heat weapons and all this other strange stuff, then you can just sanctuary, so who cares? But <laughs> there are, you have tools always at your disposal. You make it extraordinarily difficult for magic classes to even touch you. And you are able to help your team by just blocking spell balls as well. So as a monk, you are actually very anti-magic. I know some monks will disagree, but I can tell you as a primary character, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you're a problem. So monks are very good and very defensive against casters. So once again, to be defensive against martial weapons as a martial class, warrior, defensive against spells, monk. But what if you want to be aggressive? Screw defense. I mean, yeah, sure, you can have some defense, whoopity do. But your primary goal is to actually have those weapon capabilities, those options to go out and do things and not make your class pretty much purely based on defensive mechanisms. You want something else. You want it to be a bit more aggressive. Well, how do you want it to be aggressive? Do you want it to be aggressive with abilities or do you want it to be aggressive without abilities? Now, if you want it to be aggressive without abilities, without having to be like, oh man, I have like, I don't know, more abilities than on my hand, like six or seven, that's so many for me to remember, then for you, my friend, I recommend the Barbarian. Why? Well, they just go out and they just murder people. They, they don't even really know their abilities half the time. They forget to use fight after death. They never actually remember armor breaking. They never use brutal strike. <laughs> You're seeing a pattern here. They might use adrenaline, all right? They might use blood and thunder, and they might, well, they might use fight after death. Really, there's three abilities that you might use, but they're not necessary. You're barbarian. So you just go out and you just murder people because you have your standard immunities. And that's why people choose barbarians because they have their immunities. And they are just these aggressive, flankers who don't really care about their teammates, they just want to go and murder and kill and keep going. So that is the aggressive, no real, no real, ability type of martial class, barbarian. 
Now, when we said aggressive with skills, it can mean a few different things. It means that you are aggressive in being on the front lines and helping your allies. It can be aggressive as in you're going out there and you're using your skills to protect yourself, but to get yourself into a better position to murder your enemies. Your skills are, or your abilities are definitely more aggressive in that front than just standing behind and healing like some piddly healer. You're not a, you're not a caster. You still want to be out there and fight with your melee weapons. And for you, you need to answer a simple question. Do you want to be selfish, completely selfish, or have the option to help others? It doesn't mean you have to be supportive. I mean, well, this is Amp Guard. We're one-on-one -on -one fighters. We're not like team fighters or something like Belagarth craziness there. No, no, no. We, we are we are one-on-one -on -one fighters. So you can have the option to help people. Again, do you want to be selfish or selfless? If you want to be selfish, purely selfish, it's about me. I want to kill people. I want to use my abilities to be cheap. I want to make people frustrated when I'm able to use my abilities defensively or when I'm able to use my abilities to get a cheap one edge up. Then I recommend to you, my friend, the assassin. Now, assassins are great against unarmored targets because they have poison, because they have a bunch of throwies, because they have a bunch of other things that can complement their kit of going out and murdering. They don't have to be just pure melee. They could have a throwy or two, and uh, their abilities make it so that they are so annoying and um, so cheap as well. But you have a, quite a few abilities to keep track of. I mean, it's more than like two already, so you're, oof, you're showing your intelligence to that barbarian over there. So when you go out there, you have to use your abilities intelligently. Should I shadow step? Should I blink? You have to make that quick step decision. You have to say it quickly. You have to time it perfectly. You have to be able to get your poison charge. You have to make sure that your poison is actually going to hit in the specific spot that's not armored. You have to have all these pre-planned things and you have to use that concentration. You have to use that understanding of your abilities in, a, in an aggressive fashion a lot more than a barbarian. But once again, your abilities do not help your teammates. Who cares? You're there to just murder people. Now, as someone who wants to help your teammates, but can use those abilities to help yourself, you have the Scout. Now, the Scout is a hodgepodge of abilities where a lot of them are aggressive. If you look at tracking, it's kind of aggressive to stop someone else. You can call it defensive or aggressive, but you're trying to use it on someone else that's on the en enemy team. You have Dispel Magic, which is also aggressive. You have Heal and Release, which are kind of supportive, of course, but those are more of the, oh, um, I can maybe fix something done rather than just being completely defensive, like a monk and a warrior are. Just, those are way more defensive. It's more of an adaptation of everything else. And you try to use these abilities somewhat sparingly when they pop up in order to help you be a lot more aggressive. You know, you're not really a stand in the back scout if you're melee. You will always be going up and you will always be trying to do something. You'll be looking around, you'll be trying to use your abilities properly, you'll be trying to chase down people, you'll be trying to find that edge, find that little wedge as well where you can fit yourself in and make it so that you will be able to give the most impact in the game. So once again, if you want to be selfish with martial class and having abilities, then I would recommend an assassin. But if you want to be supportive of your team, then you could be a scout. Now we've gone over melee as martial classes, but what about melee as spellcasters? You would think, well, they're spellcasters. They have to be in the back. No, now that's not true. Spellcasters are for those people who are like, yeah, I want to go melee, but I also want to have 30 different options in the back of my head that I'm keeping track of on a numerical calculus sheet every single time I go into combat that I can bring up within the snap of my fingers and maybe get it right, maybe get it wrong, and my get it wrong, I mean die. Get it right as in, hey, I actually recall that. Doesn't mean I succeeded, but hey, I recall that. So if you have the mental capability and, uh, well, the desire to do this while also engaging in the very difficult bout that already is melee combat, I mean, if you're in melee, you generally have to dedicate your whole mind to it, but adding in spell casting is another general bit, then you have three real options. Wizard, you're out. You're not, you're not a melee class. I don't care what anyone says. If they do it, they're cool. They're having their fun as a little Jedi or whatever with their shows, but they're not, they're not a viable option. The first question I have to ask you is, are you interested in um, singing? Are you interested in singing? If the answer is yes, then I would recommend Bard. Why? A lot of Bard's defensive capabilities and survivability, really, comes from using these unlimited songs, switching between them on the dime, that I have not seen many other Bards do at all. But other people say that every Bard can in, in, in the East Coast. I guess they're just better than everyone else. So that's, that's a claim I've heard. But in reality, 
I have not seen many bards do this. If you are willing to go through possibly one of the highest skill caps, which is being extremely good in melee, switching songs on a dime, identifying what you need, especially against like five different people and choosing the perfect song at that time and switching again and keeping your feet still and all this other stuff, then yes. Bard is a great option. They are also okay if you want to have crowd control with melee, but really you need to be able to add that song element to it. If you don't want to go through that much effort to get your defenses, but you still want to have some defenses, then I would recommend that you go druid. Why? Well, druids are very selfish creatures if they choose to be. And by being so selfish, you can enchant yourself with stone skin and many other wonderful enchantments. Now, this just gives you a base, hey, I have abilities. I've kind of used them all in enchantments, but I've also got a few extra if I really want. I mainly just want to go out there, have magical armor and stuff, and just wail on people and use this passive defense that I've already gotten. If you want to have that passive defense and still be susceptible to running out of spells, this is the problem with melee druids, is running out of your enchantments, then I would recommend druid. It is a battle constantly between trying to figure out if you have your enchantments, uh, if you're going to run out, if you're not, because once you run out of enchantments, you are a weak, weak melee fighter. The last melee fighter is a is more if you want to be defensive than anything else. While druids can use their passive um, buffs to be a bit more aggressive in the front lines, and bards can sing and kind of crowd control, healers, they don't have any way to be innately defensive. If they're stabbed in the chest, they're dead. That's, that's it. They don't have armor that they can buy. They don't have armor that they can make to put on themselves. They have nothing. So as a healer for melee, you're, you're more of those people who want to be defensive help your teammate, but not really get into the fight. So, to review, for melee spellcasters, if, you wanna, if you're able to sing and want to kind of crowd control, you can go bard. If you want to have a passive defense so you don't have to sing, then druid. If you want to be more of a defensive fighter, not really fight, but more support your team, healer. Mainly because, again, you do not have any way to protect yourself. Now, originally, this video was meant to be just one piece, but after editing it and seeing how long the video has become, I have to split it between melee and range. So, watch for the next video next week on if you are interested in the ranged option. So, until next time, keep LARPing.